We're doing another Where Are They Now? We're going back to November of 2012. These crack me up. Watching back the old ones, it's it's horribly frightening. Um, or Anyway, I will link the original in the description box below. Go have yourself a little chuckle. Remember, these are the days before HD, so cut me a little slack. And my eyebrows, cut my eyebrows a little slack. Anyway, let's go back, and if you are new to this concept, I go back to my favorites of the month from the same month, but four years ago. So we are revisiting my November favorites from 2012. So here we go. I have printed out my description box because I still filled them out way back then. And we're gonna run through the list. First thing I talked about then was a YouTuber that I enjoy watching and guess what? I still like watching her. It's Teresa from Brunette Beauty Blogger and I will put her link to her channel and just go watch her. She should have a lot more subscribers than she does. So let's rectify that right now. Everybody go over there and click subscribe. You will not regret it. I still follow her tutorials. They are excellent. They are much more direct and focused and to the point than me and you will learn a lot and I promise you, you will favorite them and follow them along when you do your makeup. I do it all the time. Okay, uh, as far as products that I talked about back then, I talked about Victoria's Secret sweatpants, which even back then had been discontinued because I slept in them and then I would stay in them and then go take my kids to school. Not a lot has changed since then. Um, I still like that concept. I have switched over to Target sleep pants, is what I like to call them. I am partial to the Gilligan O'Malley sleep pants. Believe it or not, what you cannot see is that I have them on right now. Um, it's embarrassing, but true. They don't actually have pockets, which I do prefer because then I can slide my cell phone in them. But this time of year, I generally just throw in a jacket and put the cell phone in there. What I like, what I'm looking for in a sleep pant, we all have our little weird idiosyncrasies, is I like not an elastic cuff because I don't want it to leave the ridges in my ankles, but I like a, a wide cuff around the ankle that, that has elasticity to it so that it doesn't ride up in my sleep, if you know what I mean. So I will put a link in the description box below to the sleep pants, that I think they call them sleep leggings, that I like. I just go a size up so they're a little looser and I, I love them. I actually wear them in the summer too. They're very comfy. All right, um, on to actual products. Uh, I talked about a trio of products uh, that I liked. I don't know if Zoe is gonna do this again. They generally offer some kind of amazing Black Friday or Cyber Monday deal where you get three nail polishes for the price of one or for free shipping or something like that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and if you're not following me on social media, I highly recommend following me specifically on Twitter because when I find out about something last minute, that's the easiest way for me to communicate that to you. But back then, Zoya, I think had some deal like that and I picked up three polishes with free shipping for sure and I think it was buy two, get one free or something like that. And the polishes I picked up are still here and still in use. And they were Raven, which is a black and kind of a dupe for one of the Chanel polishes. I can't remember what it is anymore. And uh, Petra, which is also another Chanel dupe for, man, it was a huge one back then, but now it doesn't even matter anymore, does it? That's how funny. And then Pasha, which is a beautiful, it looks like nothing in the bottle, but if you're looking for a nude that has just a little something to it, it has the faintest hint of a shimmer to it. It's not a flat nude, so it doesn't look like you have mannequin hands or corpse hands. And it's actually, I'm wondering to myself, why am I not wearing this right now? I might need to rectify that when this video is over. See, can you see it? Ah, see that shimmer? It's beautiful on the fingers. Still love it. The next favorite back then was the CeraVe moisturizer in both the AM and PM versions. I'd been seeing a dermatologist back then. I was still trying to figure out what was going on with my skin. I'm happy to report that I no longer see a dermatologist for skin issues, and I'm no longer using the CeraVe moisturizers. Um, so I'm not paying for a doctor, but I am paying a little more for my moisturizers. If you are new to my channel, then you don't know this. If you're not new to my channel, you're probably gonna say it along with me. I am using the Colleen Rothschild uh, skincare line, and in the morning, I use this. Okay, I know, it's folded down to the very little nugget, so I do have my backup so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the Colleen Rothschild Sheer Renewal Cream. Obviously, I adore it. I've gone through many, many, many a tube. 
This is what I use in the morning. And then in the evening, my moisturizer is again from Colleen Rothschild and this is the face oil number nine. This is my be all and end all. I, I'm going on year two or three, I can't remember. My skin has never looked this good in my entire life and I will continue to pay for this because it works. So there you go. Uh, next was the Laura Mercier Body Souffle Cream in Amber Vanilla. I, uh, I say used to, obviously four years ago, my kids, at least one of them, was Shane still in elementary school? Yes. I used to get my kids, teachers, uh, Christmas presents or holiday gifts. And um, this year, I don't, Shane has, I think, one female teacher, so this doesn't really apply. But uh, generally, during the Sephora VIB sale, I would buy the Laura Mercier collection of like either hand moisturizers or body moisturizers. And this is what I picked up, and I think this is actually still one of them. I don't think this is still good. This is prob this should get thrown away. But I love this scent. It's the Laura Mercier um, body uh, souffle cream in the scent amber vanilla, and it's still it smells so good still. But it should I, right four years. That's wrong, isn't it? That should, I should not even touch this. But oh my gosh. They still carry the scent. They have it in a perfume, body bath, shower gel. I mean, it's just, oh, it, it, it's so good. They sell it everywhere. They sell it at Sephora, at Nordstrom, at Saks. Um, it's so amazing. Back then, I think it had just been released and they make other scents in this line as well. The pistachio is amazing. The creme brulee is amazing. If you're an Amber fan though, this is just, oh, so good. And anyway, I had an extra one and of course this is the scent I kept for myself because it's really good. I still love it. I can't give it up, obviously. Okay, I raved in November of 2012 about a pencil sharpener. Yes, it's a basic tool. It's $10, but it's still amazing. The print is pretty much worn off, but this is the Urban Decay Grindhouse Sharpener. It has two holes, a bigger hole and a more standard size hole. The, I don't really want, oh, a yeah, okay, the top pops off and you can clean out the, the shavings. It's pretty basic, but it's amazing. It sharpens like nobody's business. I've never ruined a pencil in here. 10 bucks, you cannot go wrong with that. I, I recommend it. I've tried other sharpeners. I like that it has a top so the shavings don't fall out all over the place. It's really good. It's basic, but it's something you need if you use any kind of, sharp, any kind of pencil that needs sharpening. Lip pencil, eye pencil, what have you. I talked back then about a Maybelline Color Sensational High Shine Gloss in Glisten Up Pink. I did, no, I actually do still have some lip glosses lying around. I need to get rid of those. That's gross. I don't know where it is. I don't have it. So that's that. Sinful Colors Eyeshadow Trio in Barely There was another favorite in 2012. I rewatched that video. It's a beautiful trio. It's very similar to the Wet n Wild Trio Walking on Eggshells. I don't know where it is. I have searched all over my collection. It's gorgeous. It's pretty much the same exact colors as the Walking on Eggshells, except that the brown shade is, I think it looks like it's a matte shade, which makes it perfect. I can't find it anywhere, and I wish I could. I'm gonna see if Walgreens still has it laying around or if it's available online. Uh, if it is, I'll link it below, and I'll probably order it for myself again, because it's just an easy, everyday go-to kind of eyeshadow trio, and I don't know why I don't have it. I might have lent it to somebody and it just never came back, but it's a, it's great. It's a, or I might just gave it away. I don't know where it went, but it, it was beautiful pigmentation, great payoff, blendability. It was like two bucks. It's just, it was a great, I don't know where it went. It's kind of, oh well. Moving on. I really enjoyed the Lorac Pro Palette, apparently. Still have it. Especially the matte colors I wrote back then. I really don't reach for this anymore. I don't know why. Um, you know, back then, you, this was the beginning of mattes getting released. I know that sounds crazy, but palettes were really coming into their own back then. I make it sound like this was 20 years ago. It was only four, but this was kind of revolutionary. Uh, the Naked palette was coming up, and then this baby showed up, and this was sort of groundbreaking. And uh, I mean, the people in the UK could not get their hands on this. It was huge. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, 
okay, it's nice, but there's so many things on the market now, this is not that big of a deal. They're still beautiful shades, I just never reach for this. And I still feel like there are not the mid-tone shades that I would reach for. These are very pigmented, and the light shades are very light and almost too light, and the dark shades are very dark, and I feel like there should be some more in the transition category, but that's just me. Obviously, the vast majority of people think this is one of the best palettes ever created, and it is great, but since this debuted, there are so many great palettes. And I will say the fallout on this is ridiculous. So um, it's a goodie, but there are many other options out there. And look at how dirty this thing, I mean, yeah. Anyway, okay. And then the last thing I talked about was this, was another big deal. The release of the new uh, MAC container, not so much what's inside it. This is a random collection of I think these are all MAC shadows that I almost never use, but um, this MAC, the actual container, if you remember, they used to be just a flat black plastic, much more narrow, solid black top, nothing to write home about, and then the fact that they released a, a clear plastic top so you could actually see what was inside the palette. Remember, we had to write on it in Sharpie or something, like what was inside. This is a big deal. You can buy separately. Uh, maybe now it comes with it, but at the time you could buy separately the insert so that you could um, place the shadows inside it without them moving around. This is nice, don't get me wrong, but um, I do only have one of these and I have since gone back and picked up many more of the Z palettes. Uh, I feel that these are a little more secure than the Z palettes. They're thicker, they won't, um, you know, they're not going to collapse on you. The Z palettes are cardboard and the hard plastic top isn't quite as sturdy. So there is more danger of your product getting smushed. So for sheer safety purposes, I definitely prefer the Mac, but just if you're not traveling around with them, the Z palette is probably, it's definitely more budget friendly and it's definitely um, easier to store. They're flatter and they come in, in different sizes and there's more options, but this was the uh, groundbreaker here and it's definitely a little more travel friendly, especially if you get that insert. So I'm still, I'm still a big fan of this one. So anyway, that was what was going on back in November, 2012. I do have a playlist of my, where are they now? So um, I'll put that link in the description box if you wanna go back in time and revisit all of the where are they nows. If you are a YouTuber yourself, a beauty YouTuber specifically, I encourage you to um, do these as well. And I would appreciate it if you would give me a shout out if you do do them. Um, it, it's just nice to give credit where credit is due. Uh, it's one thing to like something every month, but it's another thing to let us know if you're still liking it a few months later or even four years later. And you don't have to have been doing this a very long time. Even if you've only been at this a year or two, let us know if your favorites are still around. And if you're a big YouTube watcher, then let your favorite YouTubers know that, hey, you know what, can you do this too? Because it's a lot of fun to watch, if you think it's fun to watch. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.